In this video, we're going to learn how to cook both fresh and dry pasta. The two types of pasta we're going to cook today, the first is the fresh pasta, which is an egg pasta. So uh, you can see how we make this fresh pasta in our uh, pasta making video uh, on this site. Um, and then we're going to learn how to cook the, uh, the dry pasta. Um, the main difference between the fresh and dry pasta that we have here, the fresh is going to be made with uh, egg and uh, bread flour. Uh, whereas the dry pasta is made with uh, water and semolina flour. So the cooking is uh, quite different. They're both gonna start with boiling water. You can see we have two pots of boiling water here. Uh, and to each of these pots, we're going to add about two tablespoons of salt per gallon of water. Uh, this sounds like a lot of salt and it really is. Um, but this is our only opportunity to season the pasta itself. Of course, if we're cooking this pasta to then put it into a sauce, the sauce will be seasoned, but this is really our only opportunity to season the pasta. Um, so, um, there's an old adage that the salt should, or that the water should be the same salinity as the ocean. Um, you know, about two tablespoons per gallon has proven to be pretty effective. Um, a lot of people at this point would add some oil to their water. There's a misconception that it'll help the pasta from sticking. But if you think about the way oil and water interact, right, they don't combine, they separate. Um, so really, all we're gonna do is dump our oil down the drain. Uh, it's not really gonna come into contact with the pasta and it's not going to keep it from sticking. Um, when we strain, we can talk about some ways that we can keep the pasta from sticking, but adding oil to the water right now is not uh, the way that I would recommend doing it. All right, with pasta, it's really important to start with boiling water. And if you look down into our pots here, I have one pot that's really full rolling boil and then one pot that's just kind of simmering. I really want this full rolling boil for my pasta. So for cooking dry pasta, I like to use between uh, four and six quarts, so between uh, a gallon and a gallon and a half of water. Uh, I tend to go towards the, um, the larger side, so I have about uh, six quarts of water in this pot here for this pound of pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pasta into my boiling salted water. And I wanna make sure I give it a good stir. Uh, starches gelatinize, okay? And as these starches gelatinize, what they're gonna to wanna to do is this pasta's gonna to wanna to stick together. So when I first put it in, I wanna give it a stir uh, to keep it from sticking. Uh, and I'm gonna do that occasionally until my pasta comes back up to my full rolling boil. You can see when I added the pasta in, the pasta was room temperature, so I put this room temperature product into my water. The water stopped boiling, it needs to come back up to that boil. And until we have that boil to kind of agitate the pasta, um, I'm gonna to wanna to stir it occasionally uh, to keep it from sticking. So dry pasta is gonna take much longer to cook than fresh pasta. Um, fresh pasta is only going to take uh, between a minute and a half, two minutes. Um, and we don't wanna overcook either pasta, but with fresh pasta, um, it's even easier to overcook. Um, we really wanna get a little bit of al dente. Now, you're going to get a much more pronounced al dente. Al dente is Italian for uh, to tooth. So it's like texture that you feel uh, in your teeth when you bite into the pasta. Um, so with the dry pasta, we're going to have the potential for much more al dente, but we can still achieve that um, that mouthfeel with fresh pasta. We just have to be extra careful not to overcook it. All right, so you can see my other pot of water has come up to the boil. So I'm kind of separating my fresh pasta. Fresh pasta uh, is gonna be a little bit tacky. And in the, the previous video on making fresh pasta, uh, I talked about kind of tossing it in flour. And I'm doing that uh, kind of once more, just making sure that all my, uh, uh, my noodles are kind of separated so they're not in a big clump. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my noodles here. I'm gonna put them right into the water. 
and I'm just going to kind of delicately coax them apart. We're going to let this come back up to a boil. I'm going to give this dry pasta one more stir. Now that my water is boiled, it should be good on its own. And we're going to let my fresh pasta, and if you can see down into the pot, um, you can see that all my noodles are nice and separated. And this is exactly what I want to see. Now, people will ask, how do you know when pasta is done? Um, for dry pasta, I tend to follow the um, directions on the package. Um, I usually go, you know, if there's a, a range, say it says 10 to 12 minutes, I'll usually go 10 minutes and then evaluate it because uh, you can always cook it more, a whole lot uh, more difficult to go back once it's overcooked. Um, you know, so people say, oh, throw it against the wall, throw it on the ceiling. You know, there's all these crazy methods. Really, in my opinion, uh, the, the, the only way to really tell if pasta is done is to taste it. Because uh, again, we're really going for that, that texture. We want that al dente. So I'm gonna let this fresh pasta cook. Like I said, usually it's between a minute and a half and two minutes. So at that minute and a half mark, we're gonna go ahead and evaluate it. Check this pasta. All I'm going to do is just remove one noodle here. Okay. And give it a little taste. Mm. And that's perfect. Because, hmm, excuse me, because we really developed the gluten uh, when we made our fresh pasta uh, by mixing for 15 minutes. Um, our pasta has a really nice uh, mouthfeel. It's really nice and chewy, um, exactly what we want from fresh pasta. It's very delicate. Fresh pasta has, pasta has a really nice delicacy to it, um, but we still have nice mouthfeel, really nice chew. So I'm just going to use this strainer here to remove this pasta from my pot. Okay. Now, if I was going to, uh, so this is, um, um, fettuccine that we're uh, cooking here. So if I was going to put this, say, in an Alfredo sauce, right, I would take this fresh pasta out of my water and then immediately put it into my hot sauce and toss it into my hot sauce. If I was worried about this sticking together, this would be the point now. If I was just going to serve this, um, you know, plain, uh, or I wanted to hold it for uh, a little while, this is where I could put uh, maybe a little bit of butter or a little bit of oil onto it. Um, the only... Uh, caution that I have for you is when you add the uh, fat to the fresh or to the pasta, whether it be fresh or dry once it cooked, once it's cooked, um, the sauce is going to absorb less. So um, we're not going to get as much flavor. The sauce isn't going to cling to the pasta as well. So it's really best to go right, especially with fresh pasta, to go right from cooking into the sauce that you're going to serve it with and then serve it right away. Right away. Fresh pasta does not hold particularly well. So our dry pasta still needs a few minutes, so we're gonna let this continue to boil and we'll check back in when we're ready to evaluate. All right, so uh, our dry pasta is now fully cooked uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate just to be sure. Pull out a piece. Go ahead and give it a taste. And really I'm evaluating the mouthfeel of the pasta, where it should be, um, you know, not crunchy, it shouldn't taste like, oh, I'm eating raw pasta, but it should still have a nice chew to it, a little bit of a nice bite. You can also see that when I bite into it, there's just a little bit of a white ring around. Um, it's not still raw, but it still has that little bit of texture. So these two quality indicators are gonna be what I'm looking for. But really, 
I'm looking for that mouthfeel, right? That it tastes al dente, that it has that, it feels al dente, that it has that little bit of bite left. So with our fresh pasta, um, I used uh, a spider strainer to remove the pasta. And I could certainly do that uh, for this. I could use the spider strainer to fish it out, but that may not be efficient, um, especially for larger batches. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain this pasta. Um, so I'm going to use uh, dry kitchen towels. Um, you could also use um, oven mitts, but um, the same holds true for both. The most important part is that they're dry, okay? So uh, water is going to conduct heat. So if these were wet and I use this to pick up something hot, I would burn my hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna strain this and we're gonna pretend that I'm straining into a sink. I'm using a bus tub today, but uh, certainly you could do this just over your sink. And notice that I'm pouring the hot water away from me. That's really important. I wouldn't wanna go the other way and pour towards me. Uh, if I pour too fast or I mis miscalculate the angle um, or I slip, okay, I'm going to pour a bunch of hot water down the front of myself. If either of those things happen when I'm pouring away from me, I'm gonna spill the hot water away from me and that's exactly what I would wanna do. So now that I have this pasta drained, I could go ahead and take this pasta and put it right into my sauce. Uh, that's really going to help the pasta soak up a lot of that sauce. If I wanted to hold my pasta warm, I could toss it in just a little bit of oil because as it cools, those starches are gonna to wanna to stick together. Now, holding pasta hot isn't such a great idea. Uh, pasta is pretty time sensitive. So we're gonna quickly lose uh, the al dente pasta that we just uh, worked to achieve. Uh, the other thing I can do is if I want to hold my pasta, just go ahead and clear this out of the way so you have a nice view here. I can shock my pasta in an ice bath. So if I was going to do this, instead of cooking my pasta all the way, I would probably cook my pasta about 80%. So instead of that perfect al dente, I would do it till it's just a little crunchy, okay? So if I put my pasta in the cold water, it's gonna do a couple things. Number one, it's gonna stop the cooking. So my pasta isn't going to continue to cook. It's also gonna keep it from sticking together. So I would cool this completely. I would strain it again into a colander. Uh, and then say I was having a party where I wanted to um, you know, cook the pasta or I'm in a restaurant and I need to cook pasta to order but I don't wanna wait 10 minutes to boil dry pasta. I can take my chilled portions of my uh, pre-cooked dry pasta and heat them back up in my sauce and be ready to go. So let's review. Both fresh and dry pasta start the same by using salted boiling water. Use approximately two tablespoons of salt per gallon of water. The difference between our fresh and dry pasta is going to be the cooking times. The fresh, and the fresh pasta is going to cook much faster than the dry pasta. Finally, with both our fresh and dry pasta, we're looking for al dente. Al dente means to tooth, and it refers to the texture of our pasta. We want to have a slight bite without a crunch.